Hi, how are you going today? This is Lynette from Tits and Bits and today we're going to look at three top tips to tame your tables in Word. I believe that Word's default table settings are not as good as they could be. So here's the three things that I do to any table in Word before I use it. I've got a document open, and here's one I prepared earlier as they say, and we're going to start with a simple three by three table. So you can see here I've got three columns, if I scroll down, I've got three rows, each with dummy text in them. As soon as we activate a table by clicking anywhere in it, you can see that the table tools, design and layout tabs appear. The design tab focuses on colouring of the cells and borders and the layout tab focuses on the settings uh, of the table such as columns, rows, cells with size, margins, distribution, position, etc. We're going to focus on the layout tab in this session. We're going to change three settings. We're going to stop rows from breaking across pages. We're going to add header rows and we're going to make the table fit to the page size. So why does rows breaking across pages matter? I'm going to go to multiple page view so that you can see the whole document at once. Here we have three columns and three rows with large amounts of text. Because of the default settings, row one is breaking over the page, which means it can be a bit confusing to read, especially if it's printed, you end up flicking back and forth between pages. So let's fix that. First, we select the whole table by using the double arrows on the top left hand corner of the table. From the table layout tab, we're going to go to table properties, which we can get to by clicking on this little down arrow on the cell size group or we can go to properties under the table group and then we go to the row tab. You can see here that allow row to break across pages is ticked so we're going to unselect that and say OK. You can see here that it's forced row 1 onto a page all of its own but don't worry we're not finished yet. In the same example even with the rows not breaking over pages we have no idea what the columns on the following pages are. So we're going to set our header row, which is here, to repeat across all pages that that table appears on. So this time we select just the header row by using the arrow off to the left hand side of the row. We go to the same properties. We've got row here and this time we select the repeat as header row at the top of each page. Say OK. And that will force it onto the other pages. Now this doesn't look particularly neat at the moment because it's uh, got set column widths and is not necessarily making the most of the page. When we inserted the table it automatically filled the width of the page. If we go to page layout and change the orientation of the page to landscape you can see that the default column width or table width changed and then the use of the page. We're going to change that. Again, we select the whole table using the double arrows at the top left hand corner of the table. And this time we go to the table layouts. You can distribute the columns evenly, which has been done automatically here using uh, these settings. So you can distribute columns evenly. I like to allow Word to do it based on the amount of content. So the first thing I do is do auto fit contents, which will then uh, set it to what's in there. So if you've only got a header column with not much text in it, it will squash that and then it will spread out to fit the rest. But then I also do auto fit to window, which will maximize all of that space. And you do need to do both of those settings because if you do auto fit to contents, it will do it based on what the current settings are. If you do auto fit to window, if we now change that page layout back to portrait, it will still keep the same settings, but it will actually fill the whole page this time. So now we're only using two pages rather than three. You can also change the margins. Uh, for currently set on normal to narrow, it will fill the page again, or we can do it to wide and it will set the columns to suit. That's all for this video. I hope you've got something out of it. 
I'll be doing follow-up videos on some more table settings as well as how to save your table settings as quick parts so that you can insert them quickly into a document. Take a look at my other videos to learn more about taming your tables as well as other office products. Thanks.